Hey, we're getting pretty close to the end of 2023, so let's round up some notable new single player games from throughout this year. I'm looking for my fellow solo, lonely single player gamers. We got you covered with a bunch of games, 25 in fact. So let's get started off with number 25 and talk Amnesia, The Bunker. This is really a good return to form for Amnesia. Obviously the original Amnesia really kicked off a new era of horror games, games being played and watched on YouTube YouTube, it was a significant release and, you know, the developers had done a lot with Amnesia since then, but Amnesia the Bunker feels like a really good creative step forward. There's a little bit more to it, a little bit more of a tool set, uh, a little bit more of weapons and good use of light and darkness, where the original game did a great job with a lantern and torches. Here, there's a really great new spin on it and the game is genuinely unsettling. The fact that they set it all in a bunker is a really Really great creative choice that just works. It's incredibly effective for horror. In 2023, we didn't really get a lot of horror games quite like this one, so definitely consider it. Next over at number 24, we have Sea of Stars. Sea of Stars is already beloved by a lot of people as just a love letter to some classic JRPGs. But this is from the studio behind The Messenger. So uh, at this point, you can kind of get they know what they're doing in terms of writing love letters to classic genres. Sea of Stars has compelling characters, a really interesting world, a good solid battle system that feels like the old days, but is still interesting enough in modern times to keep you interested and it looks gorgeous. The art, the sound, the music, everything is really top notch here. Sea of Stars fires on all cylinders. Next over at number 23, we have Blasphemous 2. If you're looking for something brutal and challenging, almost a Souls-like style game, but on a 2D plane, the original Blasphemous was a go-to, and Blasphemous 2 is arguably better than the first, just more interesting levels, crazier boss battles, beautiful art, to the point where we've seen some people online, like in, in comments and stuff, just talking about Blasphemous 2 and loving it without ever having played the first one. That says a lot. Like I'm gonna keep saying in this video, a lot of games have released this year, but Blasphemous 2 stands out because there's nothing else really like it. Next over at number 22, we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Uh, believe it or not, at the time of recording this video, we haven't checked out Avatar yet because it releases at the very end of 2023 in December, but we like betting on Avatar. I know a lot of people make fun of the Avatar movies, but uh, you know, they're big hits for a reason. James Cameron built some cool worlds and there's just good action. So a game based around that, could be awesome. You know, we had an Avatar game before and some people really loved it, but this one looks promising, at least from the trailers and the marketing. We can only judge so much. We gotta get our hands on it, but we do like Avatar and the world of Pandora. So we're excited to check out Frontiers of Pandora soon. Next over at number 21, we have the System Shock Remake. Uh, this one didn't make as big of waves as it should have when it released because it is a faithful remake that seemingly made a lot of old school PC sim nerds happy. It retained the atmosphere, it retained the creepiness, the vibe, but just spruced it up for modern audiences enough without losing the soul of what it was. That's kind of gonna be a theme on this list. There were a lot of remakes this year, <laughs> we will say that. But among them, yes, System Shock is great. Next over at number 20, we have Dave the Diver, one of the biggest indie darlings of the year, along with some others we'll mention. Uh, Dave the Diver is just a really creative spin on gameplay scenarios mashed together where you're diving for salvage and, and you know exploring the unknown depths of water while also managing a sushi restaurant. It's a really fun mashup. It's got a good sense of humor and light tone to it, but there's a lot to it. It's gonna be on a lot of people's favorite games of the year list, so if you haven't checked it out already, check out Dave the Diver. Diver. Next over at number 19, we have Trepang 2. The best thing I can say about Trepang 2 is like if you like the original Fear, you know, like before that series went crazy and got kind of crappy, uh, the Trepang games should be up your alley. I mean, just look at gameplay here. This is in a lot of ways a spiritual successor to the original Fear with that tight, crazy, chaotic and destructive gameplay and cool gore and slow motion. But essentially, it takes it to the next level with better visuals, cooler scenarios, more enemy types, and just some really good bullet dodging and explosions and good shit. It released in the summer of 2023 and not enough people talked about it. 
Next over at number 18, we have Dredge, another indie darling this year that absolutely hooked us. This game is essentially centered around just driving your little boat, dredging the seabed for salvage and trying to earn some money and make your way through these mysterious islands, you know, selling stuff, repairing your ship, upgrading your ship to go further out into the water. The more you earn, the more you upgrade your ship, the further out to sea you can get, but you're also struggling with a day-night cycle where time moves as your boat moves and at night, spooky things come out and you're in danger. So there's a really good air of mystery to the game. Uh, there's no voice acting, but all of the mysterious weird villagers you meet on these islands and in these harbors are interesting. The game is just dripping with atmosphere, but thankfully the fishing, the salvaging mini games are a lot of fun. It's a core element of the game and it's really satisfying. In 2023, there's definitely no other game like Dredge. We'll say that. So I think it earns a spot on this list. Now, next over at number 17, if we're talking about games that are incredibly unique, we have Atomic Heart. This is a first person shooter, uh, kind of Bioshock inspired, but it really goes its own way in this weird futuristic Soviet society where uh, robots that were designed to work for humans uh, all went crazy at once and, and destruction runs rampant and you're a guy who's got to shoot and blast and puzzle solve his way through. This game is extremely flawed. We will say that. I pointed that out in our Before You Buy video. It's got some open world design that isn't that satisfying and some moments that are just kind of strange and don't feel too fun to play. But overall, with some boss battles, some good feeling weapons, music, and incredible art and environment design, Atomic Heart just felt like something unique to play through. Next over at number 16, we have Armored Core 6. This is the latest game from From Software, the developers behind Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Elden Ring, but they're going back to their roots here, and they made another simple game about mechs blasting each other. This is not an RPG where you're building up your magic or your strength. No, this is all focused around your specific builds on your mech. Everything hinges on all of the little modifications and weapon loadouts you set for your bot. And it is still incredibly challenging with some wild boss battles. And while there is a story, the focus is on blowing away robots and it can be fast, chaotic, and really fun. If you like From Software games and like you like their approach to things, you will still feel that here. And if you've never played an Armored Core game, this is a fine one to jump into. You'll be just fine. You'll have fun. The focus is on the explosions. Next over at number 15, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage. This was Assassin's Creed's kind of return to form, a back to basics game, if you will, where it's centered around one singular city, one regular old assassin, and open-ended missions where you assassinate a character and then try to escape. This started initially as a spin-off for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where you play as Basim, and they made a full game out of it, and they really tried, and ultimately, it's a bit divisive. Some fans are really loving it. It's a good enough return to form. Other Pick your fans, not so much. But at the very least, I think it's a positive that Assassin's Creed put out a game that's focused just around being an assassin. Not a massive open world, 100 hour game where you're a Viking or a Greek warrior or anything like that. Just a regular old fashioned, flawed Assassin's game. Next over at number 14, we have Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, I know we're putting it at number 14 just because, you know, the order of this list doesn't really matter too much. There are so many great games this year. And for a lot of people, Baldur's Gate 3 is gonna be number one on their own personal list because it is an incredibly compelling open-ended RPG. It is a classic style RPG where all your choices and decisions matter. It's got tight, focused, challenging, turn-based gameplay and really compelling characters that you're gonna fall in love, I mean, maybe not fall in love with, but be absolutely fascinated by. It is a lengthy, challenging, compelling game that I think most people should experience. I know some people are turned off by the turn-based gameplay, some people just don't like that, but everything else here, the dialogue, the story, the decision-making, it is so top-notch, you should see it for yourself. And just how the game reacts to all your weird decisions and failures and how it keeps going. The writing here is nuts. Again, we're probably gonna, as we get closer to the end of the year, talk a lot more about Baldur's Gate 3, so yeah, let's move on. 
Now, next at number 13, we have Phantom Liberty, the full-on expansion for Cyberpunk 2077. Part of Phantom Liberty's whole story here is that it comes also with the update to the base Cyberpunk 2077 that finally completely overhauls the game and realizes its true potential, from bug fixes to RPG overhauls. But then, when you move that out of the way, you have this actual expansion, Phantom Liberty, and it's a great, solid expansion as an expansion should. It brings a new area, the area of Dogtown, which is an incredibly detailed and vibrant part of the city that feels totally different, but also just so cyberpunk in its ideas and atmosphere, but to a story that slots right into the main story and fleshes some things out. Uh, not to mention also just adds a little bit more depth to Keanu Reeves' Johnny Silverhand and still manages to squeeze in some new characters as well. Phantom Liberty really does a lot and they totally nailed it. Next over at number 12, if you're looking for a Souls-like game, but not from From Software, we have Lies of P. This is that one where it's like a dark and gritty Pinocchio, but it's kind of like Bloodborne. And that's the best elevator pitch a game could possibly get for some folks. Lies of P is compelling. It plays some things safe and they stick very much to From Software's formula in a lot of ways. But in terms of how you outfit your character, uh, you have kind of like a moddable arm and the atmosphere itself and some of the boss designs just feel so unique and special. This game has been a hit. They've already announced a sequel, but some of you out there haven't experienced it yet and if you like these types of challenging souls-like games lies of p should be on your list now next over at number 11 we have dead island 2 dead island 2 isn't like out of this world amazing but it is just a good old-fashioned video game good time it's not open world it's not super long it plops you in smaller kind of like hub like areas and you get to chomp it up and blow it up zombies you can play through it with a friend. It's got really great environments and some satisfying gore and combat. The combat works so well because of the hit of the weapons, the visual effects, and also just the way zombies get blown to bits with arms falling off, blood everywhere. It's just some satisfying zombie video game killing. The story is whatever. A lot of it is totally forgettable, but that moment to moment gameplay, it's a good time. And I know this is a single player list, you know, but if you do have a moment to play with a friend, it does make it a little better. Next over at number 10, we have the Dead Space remake. This released early in 2023, but don't forget it because it is a great remake of the original classic Dead Space from I think 2008. So what they did here was obviously completely overhaul it. It plays a little better. The graphics are out of this world and they introduced tiny little tweaks here and there to make the game more interesting. A couple of cutscenes are a little different. Uh, the gameplay flow is a little bit different in some environments, but ultimately, it's still the same game. They didn't ruin anything, they didn't butcher anything, and it's a good way to play through Dead Space. What does this mean for the franchise moving forward? I don't know. I would love to see them make a whole new, fresh Dead Space game with this formula, this vibe behind it, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. For now, we can play this. Next over at number nine, we have The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, another one of the big heavy hitters this year. Again, the order of this list doesn't really matter too much. There's just a bunch of games to talk about. Tears of the Kingdom is essentially Breath of the Wild on crazy mode. It takes the world and essentially doubles it if you've played it uh, and adds a bunch of physics based mechanics and enables a ton of experimentation and just weird wacky zany shit to go down. While it feels like the furthest from a traditional old regular old fashioned Zelda game, it doesn't really matter here because the adventure is cool. There's a bit more story here and the moment to moment gameplay, it will hook you. It will have you addicted. We waited a long time for this one and it was worth the wait. Now, next over at number eight, we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This is the follow-up to Respawn's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and it continues the journey of Cal Kestis. And it brings a new conflict, new bad guys, a uh, kind of big open hub area, and a ton of planets to explore. Uh, along with that, multiple fighting stances. You can fight with a heavy cross guard lightsaber, two lightsabers, a staff, or a lightsaber, and a blaster. So everybody can kind of live out their own little Star Wars Jedi fantasy, customizing their Cal, and just going through a good old fashioned fun Star Wars video game adventure. It kind of left me wondering where it's gonna go next, but it was still a good playthrough, a good time. Is it better than the first one? I don't know for sure because that one really just felt like a big surprise, just a cool adventure, where this one is definitely just like the bigger, bolder sequel. Either way, it's nice to have good Star Wars games again.
Next over at number seven, we have Hogwarts Legacy. Now, if you were looking for like a big open world Harry Potter adventure where you get to be a student of Hogwarts, they pretty much nail it here. There is an incredible recreation of Hogwarts itself and the surrounding areas and towns, and it's got some flaws here and there. I don't think everybody loved the combat or the story. It ended up being super memorable, but for just that wish fulfillment, hopping on a broom, flying the Hogsmeade, blasting some bad guys with your wand, doing Avada Kedavra, it is certainly a good time for that. Now, next over at number six, we have Starfield, Bethesda's next big game, their first game that isn't Elder Scrolls or Fallout. Starfield is a completely new thing about space exploration. And believe it or not, it feels a lot like their other games, but this time centered around shipbuilding, exploring different planets, and doing Bethesda RPG stuff. Is Starfield perfect? No. Has Starfield proven divisive? Yes. Some people love it, some people hate it, but a lot of people have spent some time exploring these worlds enjoying these characters, you know, building their own ships, which I will say is my absolute favorite thing about this game, to completely build your own ship from the ground up and then hop in it, is just really satisfying good video game stuff. Again, I don't think the game is perfect, but some people just like a Bethesda video game as like a warm and flawed buggy blanket, and uh, yeah, Starfield is definitely one of those. Next over at number five, we have the Resident Evil 4 Remake. This is a full remake of the classic Resident Evil 4, the game that changed a lot of video games and especially the Resident Evil series. Uh, here, it feels a bit stronger. Everybody's got a little bit more to do. Leon is a bit more compelling. Ashley is a bit more interesting. Luis is a bit more interesting. And the game is just absolutely gorgeous. Incredible recreations of levels, areas we've spent so much time in over the last decade or so. And thankfully, now it just plays like Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3 Remake, meaning it's a lot of fun. It's really accessible and easy to pick up and play, but can be pretty challenging and still requires a lot of tense resource management. And now you have a knife and you can do parries. They also followed up pretty quickly with the Ada Wong separate ways DLC. So there's a lot of game here and you should consider it if you love Resident Evil, if you haven't already. Now, next over at number four, we have Final Fantasy 16. This is a massive game and Final Fantasy's big foray into action combat. This is not a turn-based RPG or some spin on RPG combat. It is all about swinging your sword and killing enemies, but it's also about turning into massive creatures and punching other creatures in the face, which is great. This is a Final Fantasy game that feels a bit edgy, a bit darker, they say bad words, there's gore, and it's interesting. Is it the best Final Fantasy game ever? I don't know for sure, but it's got great characters, some incredible music, and it's a great adventure. Everybody's different. Everybody has their own favorite Final Fantasy game, and some people out there, it might be Final Fantasy 16. it might be you. Next over at number three, we have Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Uh, this is the latest adventure in the Insomniac Marvel Spider-Man games. We had Spider-Man 2018, we had Spider-Man Miles Morales, and now Spider-Man 2 essentially is an adventure with two Spider-Men, Peter Parker and Miles Morales, fighting against classic Spider-Man villains like Venom and Kraven, and it's a really good time. This is very much a big old crazy superhero sequel with bigger action set pieces, more bad guys, and just a lot more fun. The combat is still pretty similar to the last game, but web swinging has a couple more tricks and there's a parry mechanic and just good Spider-Man action and a bigger world to explore now with the addition of uh, Queens and Brooklyn. I don't know what else there is to say without going into spoilers or anything like that. So Spider-Man 2, everybody loves Spider-Man. If you like Spider-Man, maybe give it a shot. Now, down at number two, everybody should love RoboCop. He's one of my favorite, favorite characters ever, and he recently got RoboCop Rogue City. It's the first RoboCop game in quite some time based on the classic 80s movie, uh, and it's a pretty solid one that kind of understands what makes RoboCop so special and why people have loved him for decades. This is a flawed game. This is more of a double A game than a full-fledged triple A game, but it's got fun, crazy, over-the-top first-person shooting where you're exploding heads throwing explosive barrels, and just having a good old classic video game fun time. It does not reinvent the wheel or anything, but it is nice to see classic actor Peter Weller back as Robocop doing his thing. 
Now down to number one, we have Alan Wake 2. This is Remedy's follow-up to the original Alan Wake from like 13 years ago. They finally made a sequel and continued the adventure, and it is an incredibly awesome one. It takes everything they've learned from classic games that they've made like Max Payne up to uh, more recently like Quantum Break and Control and makes a really fun survival horror adventure. It is cinematic, it is atmospheric, it is pretty tense and scary, but also fun to play. There's a lot of creative sequences in this game that are unlike anything you'd see in other games. It's definitely one of the more unique games this year, and you probably will be able to get into it and understand most of the story without playing the first game. If anything, playing Alan Wake will make you want to go back and play the original and play Control and just see what remedy the developers are really up to, because it's a lot of crazy stuff. But that's it, those are 25 new single player games that have released from throughout 2023. It's been a big year, it's been quite a journey, and there's plenty of other games we didn't even have time to talk about. So let us know in the comments some of the games that you're thinking about, some of the games that you've played from this year, or maybe are looking forward to releasing at the very end of the year. Now, if you just like talking games with us every day, all you gotta do is click the like button, it really helps us out. Thank you for that. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.